welcome to another episode of One Mic Night, the podcast that brings you stories of artists and people on your personal journey, helping to guide, answer questions, and motivate you in the business. I want to thank all you guys for the support. Thank you for watching the episodes on YouTube, downloading the audio podcast, which you can find on every platform. You can find it at One Mic Night, O-N-E-M-I-C-N-I-T-E podcast with Marcos Luis. And I want to thank you guys for taking the time and sharing these episodes. We've got a lot of great people with powerful stories. Today, I'm very excited. My guest is a photojournalist. He is an international award-winning photographer. You've seen his photos. You may not know it was him, but after this, you probably will. Please welcome Ron B. Williams to One Mike Night Podcast. Hi, Ron. How are you doing? Hey, Marcos. I'm doing great. Thank you so much. I appreciate the opportunity to talk to you today and to talk to your listeners. And it's really exciting. You know, we've we've been friends for over 20 years over now. Over 20 if, years, yeah. If, if not longer. And we've been talking about doing this for quite a while, and I'm so glad that it's finally happening. So I'm thanks a lot. you can make it. Yep. Listen, I have questions. <laughs> <laughs> the first question is, who is Ron B. Wilson? Oh, that's that's pretty deep, and that's a great question, and, and something that um, is definitely evolving. I, I studied photojournalism back in the '90s. I went to school. I, I live here in South Florida now. I went to school at the Art. It's always my background, and after that, I've gone into many different fields of photography. I shoot weddings and portraits, and fashion and commercial work. And uh, most recently, I have become an author. I wrote a book, and this last uh, you know year, we had a lot of downtime. A lot of my assignments got postponed or canceled, so I had a lot of time and kind of compiled a lot of my stories and travels and photography tips into a book. So it's it's a lot of fun seeing myself evolve. It's kind of like you know watching a movie. Sometimes I'm like, is this really my life? Am I actually? you know, doing, doing these things. A natural progression. But I want to back up for just a second. Who, how did how did you get started? Who is Ron B. Wilson? Were you always, you know, dabbling in arts and, you know, curious about photos and storytelling and theater or anything like that along the way as a child? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like I was always the kid with the camera. You know, I had, uh, uh, you know, I think one of my first birthday gifts that I can remember was probably like seven years old. I got a, a small Instamatic camera and, you know, I was always the, the kid with the camera. And so I have tons of negatives and pictures from all the years growing up. And a lot of my friends still contact me and say, hey, do you have those pictures from these parties and different things that we did? So I started traveling, uh, you know, and right out of high school when I was 18, I kind of hit the road and traveled as much as I could. I went across the US and went to Europe several times when I was younger. And when I got back, everyone was very supportive of, of, of my work and the things that I was showing. And, and I decided to pursue photography as, as a career. And, um, you know, it's just continually evolved in um, growing into different types of photography. And it's sort of like come for full circle. I, I shot weddings for many years. And then I, well, I started in journalism. I shot weddings and I went back to, you know, my original passion. And now I'm kind of really enjoying weddings again. It's like being able to pursue personal projects, uh, you know, aside from the jobs that I'm just getting paid for, because, mm -hmm. you know, we all do things that we're not necessarily passionate about right, yeah. to earn money. But by doing those personal projects that even if no one else sees it, if it's something I'm working on, it's something that motivates me, it kind of reinvigorates my passion for the jobs that I am getting paid for. Right. And sometimes, but, yeah, it helps you shine a light on, yeah, what you're doing, what you're actually doing by doing the passion project. You know what I mean? Like you get a you get a chance to experiment with some things that may help you with the next job. You're absolutely right. Ab absolutely. And like right before we went live, we were just saying that, you know, a lot of things in life, I, I don't believe are coincidence. I think every person that you meet and every, if it's just someone you bump into on a, on a, on the subway or in the street they're kind of put in your life for a reason and if you're open to that and if you're you know receptive to the fact that 
this person could be your next connection or this person could be your next um, you know best friend you never know and you know like you and I we met years ago we didn't talk for years but I still feel like it was the day that we met and I still feel close to you and I feel open and and, and um, you know connected. like I said yeah yeah we still feel connected I mean like like no time has passed however I have to say when when we met you know I had no idea you were a photographer you know what I mean? Like that didn't come out until later yeah. with one of your projects. The first time I found out you were into photography and that you were a photographer was the 9-11 event, which is probably what you're most known for, some of those photographs. Yeah, um, you know, we were both living in the city at the time. And that morning, a good friend of mine, another photojournalist, she worked for the Miami Herald and she called and said that the news was reporting that there was an accident at the World Trade Center. So I just immediately got up and grabbed my camera gear and batteries and, and film. It was filmed back then and ran out the door not knowing what was happening. And by the time I got downtown, you know, both buildings had been hit and it was just my instincts. I knew as a photojournalist that this would be the most, you know, consequential day of my life. And, uh, you know, looking back, maybe I got a little closer. I kept, you know, running with the, the first responders and got a, all the way down to West and Bessie and um, was pretty much there the entire day until I ran out of film. And, um, you know, that was kind of a bookmark in my life where it was like, I can honestly say I had my life before 9-11 and my life afterwards. And I sold some of the photos and got published with a few things. And then I kind of had to put it away for, for years. And it's something that's always been on my mind. And luckily, I've had a lot of interest lately leading up to the 20 year anniversary. And I just exhibited over in uh, the United Arab Emirates. Uh, it's Sharjah, which is right next to Dubai. It's another Emirates. And they have the largest photography exhibition in the Middle East. And I was somehow asked to come over, present my work, and also do a 40 minute presentation. And it was just the most amazing experience. I mean, it was. What, the, what was it? What's the uh, photography exhibit called? It's called Exposure. Uh, just X. P O S U R E Exposure International Photography Festival, and um, yeah, I mean it's like so many award-winning photographers. The publishers from National Geographic are there speaking, and it was just um, everything was it was unbelievably incredible and inspiring. And I met so many uh, other amazing photographers and made some connections and. Like we were saying earlier, like everything happens for a reason. So I feel really fortunate to have had that opportunity. And now I'm hoping to take that exhibit to New York. I know the time, the clock is ticking. I'm contacting some galleries and different uh, places in New York. And I'm hoping that I could have even just a small exhibition here for the 20th anniversary. So if you or any of your viewers have connections with galleries in New York, I, I'd certainly appreciate any connection. Absolutely. Was that your first time uh, attending the festival, the exhibition? Well, was that actually it was our, the second. Uh, a few years ago, I had a project in Chernobyl. I got asked to uh, travel to Ukraine to do a story about the Chernobyl nuclear power plant like 35 years later. and. It was an amazing experience and we got to meet uh, a lot of the the liquidators which were like the first responders on september 11th and they're the people that cleaned up after the accident we met with the community we were there covering an organization called long way home which is a nonprofit organization that deals with the uh, the liquidators they support orphanages and health care for some of the generations of Chernobyl mm -hmm. and they actually have a really big project called the dogs of Chernobyl because a lot of people when they got evacuated from Pripyat and from Chernobyl they just had to leave everything behind so a lot of their pets had stayed there over the years and um, kept you know breeding and so this foundation goes and they spade and neuter the animals and then they bring veterinarians over and they adopt out the animals and they've adopted over like a hundred animals um, to different people and a lot of the, the dogs are here in the US now. I like that, a very humane way to, to, to solve a problem. Yeah, yeah. It, it was incredible. 
And so the photo curator from that um, exposure, he found our work online and asked us if we wanted to come over. So this was the first year that we went over. And at first, you know, it just seemed really unbelievable. Like it was some kind of internet scam, you know, like they're, they're really going to fly us to Dubai. And I mean, and it really happened. And then I proposed the idea of um, September 11th and he loved it. And so he said they normally don't invite the same photographers to come back, but he made an exception. And so I did it two years in a row and it, um, it was literally the, the most exciting like um, event that, I've, that I've, I've, ever, I've ever done. That's incredible. I, I, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, your journey as a photographer and what it means to be, you know, a photojournalist. So you're taking pieces of people's lives and you're capturing them, you know, in a way that tells a story. What does that, what does that mean to you? How do you, yeah, what does that mean to you to be able to share that with, with the world? Well, um, Marcos, that's a, a great question because, you know, it's a very important thing and I feel honored to be able to do this as a career and then not only it's something that I get paid for, but it's something that I'm passionate about. And you know, as storytellers, a lot of times we go into whatever we're doing with, uh, you know, like preconceived uh, ideas or things that, you know, we bring from our past and our history and we, we bring it into our work, whether we want it or not. But I honestly try to start every assignment as if it was the only assignment that I've ever done. And I really try to listen to people and get to know the people and be authentic to them. And that's in my journalism work. And that would be even a wedding, you know what I mean? Especially if there were years that I was doing like 40 weddings a year and, you know, it kind of would be like every weekend and I needed to get certain shots. But I always try to meditate like an hour before I leave my house and just go in with a clear mind and really try to understand what's happening in front of the camera because everybody has a story and everybody has the right to have their story told authentically. I, love now, it. I don't that's, want that's, to... that's that's I'm sorry I don't mean to cut you off but it's that's exciting because I think that's the biggest gem you know of knowledge right there. If you're telling a story go in with an open mind, go in to receive everything that's coming from it so that you can tell that story in an authentic way. That's, that's photography, that's in, you know, cinema, that's in every, every art that we do. Yeah, right? absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I think that, you know, like the bigger productions and, you know, Hollywood, and I'm sure a lot of projects that you're involved in in New York, you know, sometimes it might start out as a good idea. And then when art directors and writers and people get involved and sometimes they kind of change things around to make it a little more dramatic or a little bit more sellable. And, um, you know, for me, everything I do is I try to do it from a documentary uh, standpoint. And I really want to be authentic to the people and the places that that I photograph. And if I feel that I've got off track, I'll start over the next day. You know, I'll, if I get home and I'm looking through my images and I think, you know, maybe I, maybe I need to, to ask more questions or I need to listen more or I need to just be exposed to more elements and their, their friends and family. And then I can maybe get it right on, you know, in a second, second shot. But it, it's an important, important question. And I appreciate that. That's beautiful. I love that because it speaks so, I mean, it's, it's very evident in the work that you do. Now I'm going to, I'm going to put you on the spot just a little bit. And I'm not sure if I can do this because this is the first time I've done this. I'm going to put up one or two of your images if that's okay. Um, I've never done this before. So for those of you who are just listening to the podcast, make sure you also go to uh, the, let's see here. It. Make sure you go to the video. Let's see what's going on. That's not what I was going to do, but we can probably do that, right? No. Yes. Yeah, what is this? This is your. That that is my blog. That's my travel blog. And you clicked on a uh, part that was uh, a safari that I did in Southern Africa, but that's probably not what. 
you wanted to show me, I, I'd love to talk about it, but there's probably other stories there. So if you hit the, the logo up in the corner there, you can get back to the main page. Yeah. Here we go. This is what we were talking about earlier, the 9-11 event. How did this, how did this photograph come about? Well, um, that was after both of the buildings had been hit and I made my way like to the West Side Highway and I just kept going as far um, south as I could. And that was some of the firemen that came to the scene after the buildings had fallen. And it was just one of my favorite images because you can just see they're just standing there in total disbelief and, you know, looking up. And for me personally, you know, I had seen those buildings as immovable since like the 80s, but ever since I first saw them and to, to look up and clearly see that they had vanished like a magic trick, they just disappeared. And as you see all of the, the artifacts, and if you see that image really big, I mean, there's just papers and checks and uh, American flags and coffee pots and just all kinds of things that came down with the with the buildings and um, those two fire trucks, you know, completely destroyed. Decimated. And it gets such a, you know, a feeling of emotion you know, it kind of takes me back because I was in New York at the time and, you know, it makes me think how I felt at the time from their perspective, you know, it's beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Um, I decided to um, name the book that I'm working on and the projects that I'm working on um, called Resilience. And the, the way I came up with that word was you know, it was about the first responders and, uh, you know, the city itself and the residents and how New York bounced back. And I'm still amazed every time I come up there and, you know, seeing the new, uh, you, you know, the new tower that's there and just, it's, it's still unbelievable because I still have that thought of loving New York and the, and the eighties and the nineties and just being so proud of it the old skyline yeah. and but you know people we, we bounced back and we got through it and um you know it's and that word also tied a lot of my other projects that i'm working on like i was talking about chernobyl and some of the other things that i've uh, been photographing the last few years and it's all about people doing amazing work in difficult circumstances and the resilience of um, you know the the human spirit and and it's it's been a been an exciting few years and a real labor of, labor of love and a labor of passion yeah what's um travel is a big part of of what you do telling stories around the world where did that where did that passion come in you know what i mean like because now you you become a, a global citizen you know what i mean like sharing stories of people in tragedy and joy and you know every human experience well um like i said when i when i turned 18 i you know grew up in a small town in north florida and i couldn't wait to get out and see things beyond my my hometown and so i started traveling a lot then and something that i've always done so i've always tried at least once a year to have a personal travel plan and it's never like a vacation where i'm going and staying in fancy hotels i always try to find some kind of story or an angle that I want to um, tell on these travels to places like Cuba and uh, Morocco and um, you know South Africa and things where I go it's like try not to just be a tourist I try to uh, you know find a story and meet local people and then in about 2015 I really wanted to use my camera for good and I looked for an organization that would allow me to do these kinds of travel projects but also have a assignment so I found photographers without borders and we're based in Toronto Canada but and we're also a nonprofit organization but we pair photographers with grassroots organizations that are around the world so 
it's a benefit for everybody because the photographer benefits because we get access to these amazing stories and places that we would normally, you know, uh, not have a, the opportunity to. And then the organization benefits because we provide them professional images and they, they're all small and just starting out. So they need those marketing materials and they need to have the um, assets to be able to promote their their causes and and receive funding so it's been a great collaboration for me um, i've done five projects on five different continents and my next project is in bangladesh which was supposed to happen last march but it got postponed because of uh, covid but we're back to discussing it and we're hoping that it's going to be october or november this year so i'm really looking forward to that and um, i can't wait to get over there and get get shooting again. Get shooting, yeah. Has the has the pandemic been a big, you know, stop for you, or do you, have you found ways to continue to be creative? Well, definitely, I found ways to be creative by um, you know writing my book and updating my blog and just getting more focused on my business plan and working on you know just personal development things. But yes, um, pretty much everything that I had planned for the last 12 months was either postponed or canceled. And the great thing is now it's finally coming back. A lot of um, shoots that I had that were postponed are actually happening now. So I was really busy the last two weeks. I have a bunch of things coming up in May and throughout the summer. And then a lot of these international projects are starting to get back on the calendar. So yeah, I mean, it's, um, it was a crazy year, obviously, for, for everybody, but it, for for me personally, I literally, like, I went from being super busy to having, like, absolutely nothing, nothing, nothing yeah. on my calendar. Okay. But I, I really think, and I think you did the same thing. I mean, I know you were doing this live in, in New York right before the, 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 the pandemic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, I mean, we had to find ways to adapt and do things differently. So, you know, I could have just sat home and felt sorry for myself, but it's like, I found it looking back, you know, and it was horrible in so many levels of everything that's happened, especially in our country the last year. But I really found it as an opportunity to learn, listen to people, grow, talk to people and, set myself up and work on a business plan of how to change. I mean, I don't think it's ever going to happen in our generation again. I mean, but who has a pause in life to, yeah, yeah. to re reflect? Yeah. You yeah. Know? Yeah. To reflect and, you know, make changes because we're not going back into the same world. There's a new world order. And during this time, you know, we had whatever you believe in God, you know, the universe, this time was made for us to refocus and decide what's important to us, decide how we could be creative because we're all related through the art somehow um, and push forward. You're absolutely right. You know, this podcast came out of it. I started doing voiceovers because of the podcast. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you find ways to, you know, continue on with your art. I want to talk really quick about your book because it's amazing and I haven't I'll be honest with you, I haven't read a book in about a year and a half, but your book I read from beginning to end. Oh, awesome. <laughs> every photograph, every story. Tell us about it. I mean, it's it's amazing. You share a piece of you, you share a piece of life. You know what I mean? And, and it's relatable to everyone. Every single passage, you know, hits home. Well, how did, how did um, this all I, come about? Well, I appreciate First of all, you um, being interested in reading it and, um, you know, saying such wonderful things. I've gotten great reviews so far. Like I said, if you had asked me two years ago and, it, you know, if I was going to be an author, write a book, I would probably just would have went right over my head and I would have laughed, you know, but I had started my travel blog about six years ago. So I'd already taken some creative writing classes and I started trying to develop not only captions, but at least little stories that could accompany my photographs. And so I had compiled a lot of information and um, I'm working on a new degree right now. And so I've had a lot of um, opportunity to, to write things and it, everything I've written has usually been about photography or my travels. So I had already 
had a lot of material. So as soon as things happened last March, I kind of took a moment and I compiled everything together. Some of the things that I didn't have as much material as I needed, I just started reinvestigating. I started recontacting people, doing interviews, and just com uh, compiling the information. So I, the idea was to write each chapter about a different place that I had traveled and try to tell as many people's story as I could, including my own, along the way. And in between the chapters, I broke it up with little tips and lessons of photography that I learned over the years. And I try to make it just really basic and relatable. So if you're not a photographer at all, hopefully, you know, you, you can learn something. If you're already familiar with the basics, you could find something different or insightful or something that might you might have forgotten that kind of would remind you. And then for people that aren't photographers at all, I feel that there's so many life lessons that come from photography that um, that that hopefully people can take away and just apply to really any career or any business. And it's just about finding creativity and uh, you know working on personal passion projects and things like that. So uh, yeah, I'm I'm pretty proud of myself and I'm I'm excited that I actually got it done. And now the fun part is doing interviews like this and being able to promote it and talk about it and um you know give, give people's feedback so it's been it's been a lot of fun looking back on the journey what would you say to someone who wants to take a similar path to what you're doing you know everybody has their own unique pathway i'm not talking about being ron b wilson but you know take a take a journey in photography and being a photojournalist and telling stories you know what what do you say to them well, I would say definitely take time to define what it is that, that you're interested in, whether it is, um, you know, a documentary or just journalism or, you know, fashion photography or anything and, and research and study, study other people's work and kind of get inspired. And, um, you know, like we were saying, just movies, like, you know, when I'm watching a movie, I try to like study the visual language and I'm trying to figure out what's the setting and how, what's the lighting, how, how is the composition of the, of the movie or, or an image. And I really try to study those things because a lot of times you store that in your subconscious mind and I'll be on a shoot somewhere completely different, having nothing to do with that movie that I watch, but I see that lighting or that element come into um into my uh view and so i'm able to kind of pull on that that inspiration and then just more broadly be be authentic be yourself and just try new things because the, you know i think a lot of times we study things in college and we kind of get you know like okay i studied law i have to be a lawyer and that's what i'm going to do for the rest of my life but life is short you know it, it going by faster every year it seems like and you know I try to change things up and I try to keep things fresh and if there, a new opportunity comes along like and if it's something different that I can learn or a new skill that I can pick up so the idea is to stay authentic to yourself keep checking in with yourself if you have a personal plan or a business plan like revisit it every six months or every year because you want to keep changing if you if you just stay the same and you uh, you do, you know if you don't grow then you're probably are going to stay, stay not stuck same. but yeah yeah but you stay the same you want to keep learning you want to be open to learning and open to change and experiment absolutely absolutely yep. wow what cool. do you do you can do you have any plans to do film or would you consider doing films yeah, um, it's something that we're working on. Um, I actually started over last summer, we started a Facebook page and it's called 911 Finding Heroes. And it's basically, the original idea was to find some of the first responders from my uh, photos from 9-11 and interview them and kind of see how their lives were before, during and after uh, the, the, that date. Um, I found tons of people that were interested. I have compiled um, numerous people that have contacted me and, and are interested. And now we're kind of even making it a little broader where it wouldn't necessarily be just my photos. It's finding 
really other photo other photographers and other people who capture that day mm -hmm. and kind of interviewing them and interviewing the, the subjects of their photos so it's really kind of grown and we have over a thousand followers now and like i said tons of people interested the whole covid thing kind of shut things down with sag and getting permits and all of that and it seems that things are starting to open up and now that the book is out and i'm done with this um uh, speech overseas I, I really have time to kind of get back to it and revisit it so that's something that that i'm definitely still working on and uh, ready to get get back involved with and um really anything i mean I, I i've been studying i never thought myself as a filmmaker i i always stuck to stills and i have always given props to any videographers and filmmakers that i work with but it's another way of telling stories Absolutely. and it's something that it's that a I'm natural progression in. from photography yeah, yeah. bringing those, those photographs to life because a lot of the you know films that we watch are made just like a still you see it in every frame it's a still Absolutely. you know and that's from a filmmaker perspective yeah. And I also want to let you know, too, I do a little photography, too. I, uh... OK, <laughs> cool. Let's yeah, when, I went, when I went to uh, Columbia, which is now um, was it 10 years ago, I won an award. I was working with Healing wow. the Children organization. Awesome. And I went as a photographer and we did the most surgeries that any you know organization has done for wow. healing the children and repairing cleft palates and things like that. And I was the official photographer, so I shot all the photographs. Oh, wow. An award from the president of Columbia. <laughs> wow, and I got to sing the national anthem. Shut up. For the, I kid you not, in that's... front of thousands of people. Wow. We broadcast all over Columbia. Is that on this was, online anywhere? I Eric? don't think so. I, I haven't seen it. it I've never seen it. It's wow, all Colombian this... press there. I, I imagine it's online somewhere. Wow. Yeah. Well, congratulations. That's awesome. And um, maybe we can, like, I mean, I'm so glad we collaborated on this, but maybe we can like, work collab. on some other things, whether it's film or photography or any other kind of creative outlet. I would love that. I love it, too. That's exactly why we're doing this podcast, to bring people together and to, you know, find out about what we do, what everybody does. And now, I just want to know. Where you at, baby? <laughs> baby, wait. That's my mother. She wants to know how we can get in touch with you on social oh. media. <laughs> hey, mom. <laughs> hey, Anybody mom. know where we can find your books and find you on social media and all that stuff? Yeah, well, I my most um, easiest way is probably uh, on Instagram, which is just Ron B. Wilson, R-O-N, B as in boy, Wilson. And there, um, under my bio, it has a link to my Amazon page for my book. And then you'll be able to find me on, you know, Facebook and, and Twitter. But I'm most active on Instagram, so that's the that's the easiest and best way to con contact me. Thank you. I want to thank you for your time. You're incredible. You're an incredible storyteller, photographer. Everybody, please make sure you follow, donate the cause ron b wilson on instagram uh if you have anything to ask him info at ron b is that right yeah yes that is my email Pick up and the, then, i'm sorry go ahead and my um my blog that you pulled up there when, you, when we were sharing the screen is artstyleflow.com it's the word art and then style and then flow.com but from my Instagram, you would be able to be redirected back there. Also. Please check out all the links. Definitely pick up your copy of Resilience. Like I said, the only book I've read this year, I'm a little embarrassed to say, but from front to end, you will enjoy this book. Please buy your copy. I want to thank you, Ron, once again, and thank everybody for listening to this episode of One Mike Night Podcast. Please make sure you download, share this episode, subscribe, hit the bell on the top because you never know when I'm dropping another episode. Also, we are now on ragstorichesradio.com. You can find us there. I'll be back to let you know when you tune in for the podcast. Until then, follow us at One Mike Night. One Mike Night is spelled O-N-E-M-I-C-N-I-T-E. 
or you can follow me at Marcos Luis, M-A-R-C-O-S-L-U-I-S. Go to the dot com for both. You can find all of the social media links for that. And I want to thank you guys for joining in. We'll see you next time. Bye.